Shipping is the foundation of the global economy. For years, the industry sailed under the radar, escaping scrutiny for its huge carbon footprint, but no longer. So this is one of the uh, highest viscosity fuels that one can encounter. Greenhouse gas emissions from shipping are rising fast. But we actually need to look at ways to rebuild existing ships. The transition to a greener system could cost up to one and a half trillion dollars. Less than 1% of shipping is, is decarbonized. By, by 2030, we need to have these zero emission vessels operating. Denmark is one of the world's great shipping nations, and it's famous for creating sustainable cities. Now Danes are leading a transport transformation on the oceans. We're just outside of downtown Copenhagen, and we've come to MAN Energy Solutions, a company that's trying to shape the future of global shipping by designing the next generation of ship engines. Brian Ostergaard Sorensen leads the research and development team here. We are taking an internal combustion engine and then we are changing it, we are rebuilding it, we are redesigning it to burn something else. So it still is an internal combustion engine, but you are burning different types of fuel. Batteries and electricity aren't practical for long distance ships. So teams here are using this test engine to experiment with non-polluting fuels. We're looking at a very difficult transition, but also possibilities, and there is, you can say, a willingness in the industry to do this. And I think this gets me up in the morning. It gets me up in the morning that we are actually contributing to solving the challenges that you have in the industry today. Right now, most ships burn heavy, stinky bunker fuel or marine diesel. Well, it has a high sulfur content. They're cheap and abundant, but intensely polluting. Julius Fensen, a senior research engineer with MAN, is looking at greener alternatives. I think it's really interesting that the industry has started to uh, experiment a little bit more, be a little bit uh, brave. There's no agreement yet, though, on which new fuel everyone will use. Methanol, produced sustainably with solar energy, and ammonia are two options. Regulations that would push shipping to eliminate all of its carbon emissions by 2050 have been elusive. Instead, the regulator, the International Maritime Organization, has only promised to cut them in half. A deadline and a point. Ingrid Sittenval Jegu is with the Global Maritime Forum, a non profit foundation that's trying to steer regulations towards that net zero target. I think that what we need to see now is the IMO to revise that target towards full decarbonization. 50%, you know, obviously, will not, will not be enough. Cleaner fuels are typically 30% more expensive than dirtier ones, so a carbon tax could motivate the industry to switch. Vessels calling in European ports such as Antwerp will soon have to pay into the EU's emissions trading scheme, which serves the same role as a carbon tax. But countries such as China and South Africa oppose putting a heavy price on carbon. Is the industry moving faster than the regulations are? It's quite an unusual situation to have industry asking governments to tax them. But that's actually what we're seeing now. Activists have long protested the shipping industry's dirty habits and have little faith it can deliver on climate change either. More effective, they say, is to just ship less by making more goods closer to home. Beyond the questions of how this transition happens, there's also the essential issue of cost and who pays. It will, as always, be borne by consumers as that one and a half trillion dollar price tag gets passed down through the supply chain. Bo Syrup Simonson is with the Maersk McKinney Moeller Center for Zero Carbon Shipping, a nonprofit research and development center. Where does the money come from? At the end of the day, consumers will have to pay more for, for this kind of service, this kind of product. And uh, we think that that premium will be small, and especially when you compare that premium to the cost of the end product, we're typically looking at an additional cost of less than 
At the last COP gathering in Glasgow, 22 countries, but not big players such as India and China, vowed to create green shipping corridors by 2025, routes where investments in carbon neutral tech would come first. But elsewhere in the industry, there's criticism of so-called greenwashing. There is a risk of that here, is there not, that uh, country companies will sign up for this, but kind of just do it in name only? Yes, I think we've seen examples of, uh, of what you could call greenwashing. I guess meaning that the way things are presented uh, makes it look bigger uh, than the actual impact it is truly creating. The impact of decarbonizing will go far beyond ships and ports. There will also be a vast impact on supply chains. New calculations will be needed about where it makes sense to ship goods to and from and about where manufacturing should take place. It will require an enormous course correction for the global economy that's only just beginning. Chris Brown, CBC News, Copenhagen.